Hey everyone, and welcome to 1.21 Gigawatts. I am Peter, that is Connor, and this is our weekly trailer talk show. Uh, although we didn't have one last week, so it's a double super explosive edition of the show with 13 trailers. Be excited. Some some better than others. Some, be- I'll be honest, there's a surprising amount this week that I think are pretty decent to, to good trailers. Hmm, okay. More, more than we've had in some weeks, I think. There's a consistency. Not not across the board. I'm not saying there's no bad trailer. I'm just saying there's enough good ones in here that I'm like, you know what? This isn't bad. It's just in terms of the quality across the board. But, okay, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we, we pick up a bunch of trailers from the week. Uh, in this case, the last two weeks. We talk about them, give thoughts on the trailer, uh, the we're well, excited for the movie, and at the end, we pick our favourite trailer of the week. And again, in this case, two weeks. I'm not going to be, be harsh on that and say, no, it has to be from this past seven days. No. Since the last time we recorded, but best best trailer of the episode. There you go, best trailer of the show. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, we will dive right into this. Starting with trailer number two for Halloween. Did you watch this? Because I know you have a uh, your trailer two rule. No, I didn't. You didn't watch this. I wasn't going to watch the second trailer, but I caved, and I was kind of glad I did because there was a, wasn't really I thought much in the way of spoilers, but there was an extension of something we saw in the first one. Uh, if you remember in the first trailer, there was a scene where like a couple of kids in Halloween like bump into Michael when he's out, you know, out in the street. Yeah. And we get, I wouldn't even say the full version of that shot because it's like I'm sure it's still caught up towards the end just for the sake of it being a trailer. But the camera just stays with him, and we follow behind Michael as he walks, like you know, down a, a the side of a house and then into the house, and he picks up like a hammer. And like, but the whole thing's just a you know a steady cam tracking shot from behind, and it was really encouraging because it was like, oh yes, this is Halloween, tracking shots, long un- uninterrupted takes. This is Halloween. This is what I want to see. So that that was pretty hype. That was pretty exciting. Uh, the second half of the trailer, it kind of filled me again. It's it's kind of what I liked a lot about Halloween Four. Actually, it's this idea that this time, the town knows who he is and they know he's coming. And Laurie specifically seems to be like red. She seems to be the Donald Pleasant. She's she's the the Loomis of this movie. She she's like prepared. She's like he's the embodiment of goddamn evil. Everyone's going to die. Everyone yeah, needs to yeah. take care. We got that in the last trailer. Yeah, there's a couple of quick glimpses. She's like she seems to have like like trap doors stuff and set up, which I'm actually kind of excited about. I'm like, yeah, go full home alone on the asshole. This is cool. Uh, but she's prepared, and I think that's kind of cool. But it's the idea of like knowing he's coming and being proactive about it is a really fun conceit. It's one of the things that I actually like a lot about Halloween Four. That's a lot cheesier in the way it does it, but this um seems to be barking down that tree. So. Between the long track and shot, I like Halloween for a lot. I I like that side to it, and I like um, I like the ending. I like what what it does. It 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 works really well as a a trilogy conclusion. I think it's the last one I've I've seen one through four, and and that's it. That's pretty much all you need to see. (laughs) I'd I'd recommend not watching it. H two was okay if you want to see like a. What what Halloween is like when nineties inspired slasher movies to come back? Halloween H two was a fun kind of experiment to see what that was like, uh, but you know, and in a roundabout way features a cameo from Sarah Michelle Gellar, the you know obviously Buffy from the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Getting out of the way early, I see. Yes, yes, because um, they're watching Scream two at one point in the movie, <laughs> and it's the horse scene that they're watching. Right. Okay. So getting getting met and self-referential on the movie that was self-referential in the first place so metaception yeah, yeah metaception but hey uh, so Halloween's trailer 2 looked very good it's just over a month uh, till the film's out and I am excited I'm almost worried I'm worried that I'm too excited I'm, I, I, you, I'm, you definitely are I want to be cautious because I don't want my heart to be broken because let's be honest every Halloween movie that's came out when I have been old enough to, to be aware of it has been exceptionally disappointing. Um, although, interesting little tidbit. This was the first one I ever seen a theatre. Okay, right. that's cool. But here's the thing. You you love Halloween so much, and you're clearly so excited by this, that even like an 8 out of 10 will still be a little bit disappointing to you. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be thrilled with an 8 out of 10. Are you kidding me? You're yeah, saying you that as if the you're... franchise is full of 8s that I'm already no, happy no, no. with. You say that now. But there'll be a little part you going, oh, it's still not as good as, as the first one. Of course, I'm not expecting to. It can't be as good as the first one. You can't. You can't walk into a film saying this better be a ten. 
You can't. That is just asking for trouble every time. It's in the back of your mind, though. I know it is. <laughs> no, it's you're, not. you're not admitting it. But it's I am a there. reasonable man. Eight out of no, ten. Eight out of ten is kind of like my reasonable expectation hope. And then part of me is like, but Wolf is like a nine. Wolf, Wolf is easily the best one since the original, though. Wolf, it hits that mark. And that's exciting that it could. But and anything that's the voice that leaves you disappointed. <laughs> Doesn't leave you disappointed. It just it, it it's there as a possibility. Anything higher than a nine is not. I, I don't think it's worth getting into anything expecting higher than a nine. It's obviously great when it, you get that, but you never. Whenever you think it's going to be that, it almost never is. And it's the ones that's where true. you'd never expect it at all. Like take you, you know, you know, blindside you out of nowhere and just be like, no, no, no. That's was something you didn't expect, and that's why it tends to be a nine because it does something new and different, and like, hey and special and unique and whatever I mean that's why it tends to be a 10 exactly and just the final point of Halloween I got the first trailer when I went to see The Nun in the theatre and hearing that Halloween theme blasting out the speakers in the theatre oh boy oh I've baby. not had it yet but then I've not been to see a horror movie recently so yeah. that, that would explain it yeah yeah. I got that and I got um... what other shites coming up <laughs> what else did I get I got another horror movie or two I can't remember what now. I can't think of any coming up. That's annoying. I never got um, like Suspiria because I'd have remembered that. Can't you got remember. some of the just the generic October ones. Oh, I got a Predator one, which I guess kind of crosses over into horror. A lot sure, bit. barely. But like, no, there was definitely something else that was. Um, I don't know. I can't remember what it was, but hey, hearing that Halloween theme was exciting though. I'm like, I'm, I'm that's going to be one of the most. It was kind of like, now Superman Returns is a pretty shitty movie overall, right? Like it, it peaks at the plane sequence and is just boring as shit for the rest of it, and has the worst lowest lane. I can't mention that movie without saying it's the worst lowest lane ever, but it's the worst lowest lane ever. It is. Yeah, and <laughs> I mean Kevin Spacey now is Lex Luthor's kind of just a sour point in general, but well, it wasn't that great to begin with, though, was it? No, but here's the thing: that was worth going to see just to hear the opening theme in the credits in the theater. Just getting that John Williams music blasted at you and the surround sound. I get it. That was worth that moment. The rest of it, eh, whatever, forgettable. That moment was worth it. And if nothing else, I will sit there in that theatre seat and I'll be hearing that John Carpenter score. In fact, thinking about it, this may be the first time I have ever heard a John Carpenter score in a theatre. Because all the John Carpenter movies I like were all out before I was born. <laughs> mm you not seen any re-releases or anything? No, unfortunately, no. No, I'll have to try at some no. point when they play Halloween because I'm. It'll happen. It happens every so often. But yeah, that and the thing maybe get a get a re-release. But yeah, usually so. around Halloween for both of them. Probably yeah. Um, but we got the new Halloween this year, so that's that's what that's what I'll be seeing. But hey, so that is that is the first trailer. So we'll we'll move on. We'll move on because we've we've spoken about Halloween before, and uh, I just wanted to gush a little bit because obviously she did. Uh, then we have the trailer for The Front Runner which is a Hugh Jackman starring film um, with uh, what's his face Jason Reitman is the director he did uh, Up in the Air that's, that's the guy yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't have been able to tell you his name but that's yeah. the film yeah um, and this is the 1988 um, election and he is this you know the noble the noble runner for president the front runner you may say <laughs> based on the title but it's kind of about how He's this noble, noble, you know, candidate, and he believes in the process. He says that multiple times in the trailer. But sleaze and scandal just kind of follow him around anyway. They want the sleaze, they want the scandal, and then when they finally catch him with something, with a woman specifically, it all kind of crumbles. Yeah. So yeah, um, I'm not super familiar with the true story. This is based on. No, me either. I've, I think I've I've heard it in passing. Yeah. Um, when I when I listen to the presidential podcast, but yeah, that's about it. Um, seems like a good performance. I, I mean, I liked that the trailer had a very clear, distinct tone. Like, you know, they had the song it playing. Did, yeah. Um, had a good pace to it, and I thought it had a nice ending because you know, throughout the trailer, you see him with his wife, uh, Vera Farmiga, uh, who's an actress I like a lot. Uh, you see him like, talking to her, but and she's kind of reacting more unfavorably as the, the trailer goes on, and it ends with just like they're on the phone with each other, and she's like, S just say it, like she kind of knows what's coming, and he's like tomorrow's going to be a story about me and that's kind of how the trailer ends and it's like 
Even if I'm not necessarily super hyped for the movie itself, I thought it was a well put together trailer that really told us what the themes of the movie were going to be and what the focus. I mean, sure, okay, the guy's running for president, simple enough. But what the focus and the the the, the thematic where the drama comes from, yeah, the thematic center of what that's going to be. Um, so I thought it conveyed its, its movie well. So yeah, I thought it looks like it's got some strong performances. Like I say, yeah. um, direction seems pretty solid from what we can see here. Do you know, I, I, obviously he aged 20 years playing Wolverine, but it's amazing how much older Hugh Jackman looks when he he switches to a different character. It's like, no, he's not Wolverine anymore. He's he's boring yeah. middle-aged president the candidate. Yeah, candidate. It's, candidate. When, it's when he stopped working out to be... Because he got more in shape every movie for Wolverine. It, did, yeah. it was ridiculous. That man was probably as sick as steamed chicken. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, he yeah. was like, yeah, I want I a damn donut. <laughs> yeah. And you can tell, all right, I'm done now. I, I can relax. See, if I was him, on the last day of shooting for Wolverine, or for Logan specifically, I would have just went straight to the donut table. I'd just been like, right, that's a wrap. It's donut time. <laughs> I've done my time. <laughs> you wouldn't have the patience to wait. You'd be eating a donut in the middle of a take. <laughs> well, to be fair, it wouldn't actually affect your body that much on the day of. So you could probably start eating the donuts in the morning. You probably could. Yeah, won't affect you on that last day. If you had donuts, there's a good chance you'd be eating them right this second. <laughs> this is true. No, I'm professional enough not to eat them on the on the podcast. No, come on. Oh, okay. You won't eat, do- eat donuts. That's the line. Yeah, because you've never eaten anything on, on on podcast before, have you? Okay, just because I snuck a few skittles in that one time. All right, that one time. And to be fair, donuts would be quieter. So I mean, donuts would actually be an improvement from the skittles, just for the record. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Skittles are chewy. I was having to be very conscious about moving my mic away just so I could chew them a little bit. Anyway, uh, so Front Runner, pretty good trailer. Movie, not necessarily that exciting for us, but nothing to really complain yeah. about either. Uh, next up, we get a trailer for Wildlife. Now, I actually remember talking about this when it was first announced as uh, happening. I remember t- you know reading, oh, Paul Daniels directing a movie. It's his debut. And it's going to star Jake Gyllenhaal and Carrie Mulligan. I remember talking about that. I remember it being a family drama. But much like the last trailer, I think this one did a really good job of kind of separating, you know, what specifically this family drama is and what it's about and what the tone of this is going to be. And it gave me a really... And I like there's a sort of swerve in the trailer as well. The first half, because it's the kid from uh, The Visit. The, the kid... Oh, I never saw that. No, no. Uh, I'll just call him the shit-faced kid. Anyone who's seen The Visit will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, just the guy who was, was, was it, what was it he had a fit about some sort of food a fit about like food biscuits or something am I misremembering this I remember I you and so. Tim telling me this story of of the kid going on about something I think you're thinking of a different film I think you're thinking of like Conjuring oh, 2 yeah. or something like that There was because I think it was Conjuring oh, 2 the British right. family because I saw I saw that All right, okay. it, was def- it was definitely something in the visit but never mind yeah, I don't remember. That was not memorable, <laughs> I guess I'll say. But the kid from The Visit, the one who rapped, and he's in this, he's the son, and Jake Gyllenhaal seems to be a caring father, but there's this like tension early on where he, he has to like leave. And we start with like uh, the mother like talking about the forest fires and what you call the trees that are that, that both are in the fire, which are fuel, and then the ones who survive, which are, what, death standing or something like that, she's called them? Dead standing. Dead standing. And and I'm and obviously okay right right away that's that's talking about their relationship right we're, we're, this is what we're we're doing and the whole and throughout the trailer like he's away for work or whatever and she suspects that he's cheating on her and tells the kid this and seems to have the kid along when she's trying to catch him or something thereof and then but what I like about the trailer is it kind of subverts it about halfway through where it might be her just assuming that to justify the fact that she's going to maybe cheat on him. Because then we introduce to these yeah. ca- other male characters that she might end up with, and then it sounds like the kid kind of like says that to his dad, and or implies it to his dad, and he's Jake Gyllenhaal's kind of like, "Is there something you want to tell me about your mother?" And that's kind of where we end the trailer at. And I kind of what I like about it is there's a there's a tension here to it where it feels like a lot of this is about the paranoia of the other person, where the trust is out of the relationship, whether or not anything's actually happening with either one. Yeah. So. Oh, that's true. Uh, I think more than anything, I like the tone of the trailer. Yeah, that's fair. Um, it's weird. I'm not. I'm not sure it's that for me. I don't think it's that great a trailer. Mm. It, other than okay, it really gives me a tone. 
it doesn't get me hooked on okay i want to necessarily go oh, i want to see this though but it, it it's it's consistent in that one key department i think i want to see it i mean obviously there's a lot of blurbs coming up saying oh paul dano's directorial debut is magnificent this you know whatever all these adjectives the usual, yeah yeah um, and that's cool uh, but I think for me, I like the tone a lot. I like the cast. Uh, mm, you know, definitely. John Hall's great. Uh, Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan's one of those actresses who tends to be in a lot of things I don't care about. But whenever she does pop up in something I care about, she's very good. Yeah, she's probably very good in the things you don't care about too. True, true. But you know, it tends to be a lot of like you know period dramas and you know just things that you know. But when she yeah. pops up and says something like, um, uh, "Oh God, Steve McQueen movie." With Fassbender, Sex Addict, oh my god, Shame. When she pops up in something like Shame, I'm like, yes, right, great. Uh, so, so, so that's cool. Um, so I'm probably down for this. It, this looks like something. That, I don't know if it will be nominated for things, but it looks very like it could very well could be nominated it for a lot be. of awards. It, it reminds me of oh, what was the one from last year with a- with Amy Adams? Was Amy, was was Jill all in that as well? Maybe that's why I'm thinking it. I, 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 I can I can't think of the name of it now. I'm blanking on it. I'd have to look. Was this the one where he was demolishing his house, or was that like two years ago? I can't remember. Oh, that 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 was a different one. That was a different one. Okay. Oh, you think? Uh, oh, I think Nocturnal I've seen this. Animals. Nocturnal, yeah, that was good. But I I, I didn't I didn't I didn't think of that though because I wasn't really comparing it to this. <laughs> No, no, but I, it, 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 I kind of get that in terms of you know the awards buzz. It kind of feels at a similar level of a similar style of okay, oh. it could be in that sort of category. And it never really was end. much in the awards circuit, but just, it just kind of peeked its head in every so often. Although I probably liked it more than most of the films that were on the awards circuit, so you know was, <laughs> that's fair. Uh, I think that was more two years ago now, actually, rather than last year. It, you're right. Well, it probably yeah. was, but you know, whatever. Time, time's a funny beast. Time's a flat circle. It's a fickle mistress. So, that's nah, on my radar. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in whale life. Um, I think, I think if I hear good things, it's one I'll probably check out. You know, when in, when I'm catching up on yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I guess I'm expecting to hear good things. Uh, is the, the vibe I get from it. I'm expecting people to tell me that's good, and then I'll want to watch it. That's what I'm expecting. Um, yeah, and, I can't argue with that. What I like about this this trailer, just in, not in terms of the trailer itself, just in terms of an example of sometimes we get the descriptions. Because I remember talking about this, and I remember saying, "Oh, it's a character family drama. We don't really have much to say about this beyond oh, the cast is good." And then you see this trailer, and you get this like very clear, distinct tone and direction, and it's like all of a sudden that synopsis has life to it now because it doesn't just sound generic. And I think just because picture it. Yeah, because so often we'll get descriptions. It's like, well, on its own, it just sounds like a typical thing. But then you get this, and it's like, okay. It, it's why so often in the news we say, well, with the right tone, with the yeah. right direction, and you know, I think this does prove that you know, with a tone, you know, whether or not it's good is 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 irrelevant, but it has an identity which Abs- you, uh, you don't get from just the description. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, that's well life. Next up, we have at Eternity's Gate. This is uh, Van. Go, uh, played by uh, William Dafoe. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen's in there as well, as is Oscar Isaac. Uh, I will say, little, little complaint right off the bat, everyone's speaking English. They all have accents, <laughs> but everyone's speaking English. Um, maybe that'll make more sense in the movie, I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. You say they all have accents, uh, if I recall. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen just sounded like he always does to me. Okay, fair. He has a natural accent, <laughs> which is yeah. not the right country, admittedly, but it's an accent. <laughs> it, it is an accent, yes. Where, whereas Defoe, I, I felt like, was putting on a an accent. Okay, fair enough. He didn't sound American, is what I'm saying. <laughs> he was doing something. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Um, do, you know what, do you know what I liked about this trailer? Is I didn't get that it, it, it wasn't until there was a reference to cutting off his ear. I was like, oh, oh, it's a Van Gogh thing. <laughs> I was like, I'm just, you know, I got, I got it a lot earlier than that. I'll be honest, because yeah, just, just from the look of him and the yeah. paintings, I was like, oh, okay, I know what this is. No, I think what, what, why you took a while is because it doesn't look like a period piece in its style. It doesn't, and it also doesn't look like a straight up biopic. Which actually, I remember I read the description for this in the the on the YouTube link. And it, it specifically pointed out it's not a typical biopic and it's more like a 
a series of moments and some of them are even made up but the whole point is to sort of convey the and some of it's based on like uh journal entries by van gogh some of it's based on like this accounts. Is, I've got it here. This is go. not a forensic uh, a forensic biography but rather scenes based on vincent van gogh's le- uh, letters common agreement about events in his life that present as facts hearsay and moments that are just plain invented what stuck out to me about this was the visual style. There was a lot of really extreme close-ups that felt almost absurdly documentary-like, um, but it felt yeah. very stylish. And I think, while I don't typically get excited for biopics, this seems to have style, and it feels to really embrace the, the craziness of him, of the character, of the man. Oh, definitely, yeah. Like I said, I, I just I, I really appreciate how it doesn't look like a period drama. Anyway. Like, I, I think, okay period drama i've got a look in my head yeah even just from the the camera the color palette it's yeah in my when, head when you say look you're not talking about oh they'll be wearing certain types of clothes oh it's part of it sure but it's actually more to do all period pieces of a certain sort of couple of centuries all kind of look the same style wise yes and this doesn't this looks like someone made a, someone made an indie little like psychological thriller about someone it just happens to be set in this time period yeah if if you didn't tell me I, I would say, oh, it's set in the past 30 years. Yeah. Um, and he's going mad and he's painting and there's a resistance to him and it, just, it feels very delirious and very psychological. And because of that, for the third... Well, I, I'm, I'm not excited for Front Runner. I'm not necessarily interested in the movie, although I thought it was a good trailer. But for the third trailer in a row, I thought it was a really good trailer at telling me how this was different to what, than what I would assume it was based on a description. Not that description, because that yeah. description is quite good at saying it's different. But if you just told me, oh, it's a film about Van Gogh's like final so many years and blah, 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 I'd have an assumption in my head of what it was. This trailer said, no, this is this, and it has a feeling, and you got a sense of that feeling. So for the third trailer, in the, well, I mean, fourth, because Halloween was a good trailer as well. This is four trailers out of four, I think, were all solid at conveying the message of their movie. So, Sir, Van Gogh is apparently in right now because we had a big movie for him last year as well. Um, Did we? The animated one. Uh, it was called Loving Vincent, and it was a uh, it was hmm. all painted in the style of his paintings. Uh, like that, did not did not catch that, or even knew it yeah, existed. Yeah, it, it got it, it was a uh, it was definitely nominated in you know best animated for all the main all the big award oh, ceremonies. Cool. Uh, that's fair. Uh, as for as for the movie itself, yeah, I'm kind of interested. Kind of, kind of in a similar vein of wildlife. I'm expecting to hear good things, and therefore I will check it out <laughs> because of said good things. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but it, it, I should see... probably just get ahead of the curve on some of these, shouldn't we? I mean, I probably will. Both this and wildlife, I think, look good enough that I'd be willing to check them out. Should should I get the chance to? Typically, though, with these types of movies, I feel like lots of other people see them first just because they can, not because I avoid them or because I don't bother. Yeah, yeah, they don't show up at your cinema, yeah. you know, and then by the time they're at the, the on, on the home release that you can see them, you've already heard all the buzz. Yeah, exactly, uh, which is the vibe I'm getting from these. Uh, so moving on to, a, I believe this was a Netflix movie, this was uh, 22nd of July, and yes. my first critique of this one <laughs> is that the first time I heard a voice, I thought, like, because it looked kind of like a period piece, and it's actually only set in 2011, but I thought it was the 80s because it looked so, so, so murky. And I thought it was like a an, an NRA a Irish thing because of the bomb at one point, and it wasn't until it made it clear that it was 2011 and I heard more voices. I was like, "Oh, this is Norway. <laughs> it's 2011." <laughs> okay, I see what, what this I, is about now. I did not get any of that from the opening of this trailer. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, maybe I just didn't pay attention enough in the I opening mean, couple of shots. In the but... first, I, I'm I'm glancing now. In the first like 15 seconds. The kid goes up on stage, you know, and there's a there's a podium there, lectern that he stood at, and there's a big sign backdrop behind him with Norway on it in big letters. Pretty Look, pretty definitively telling me where we are. Clearly, I did not notice that sign, right? Clearly, I did not notice. I think I was trying to place the accent, and I thought maybe that was Irish. <laughs> I wasn't sure because again, everyone's speaking English in this trailer. They are, yes. Why are they all speaking English? I don't I don't get it. Because Norwegian's a stupid language. I'll agree with that. <laughs> you don't have to agree with it. It's just true. That's ah, fine. Fine. Makes more sense to me in some other languages. Not that it, make, not that it literally makes sense, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it makes sense <laughs> in terms of the noises that is that is that's happening. Um, no, Norway's a fine country. Sure. So, 
so this is this is this is a this is a, a, an event that like I don't know I didn't know enough about it to like immediately clock what it was until it got a bit more specific, and I was like okay right I know kind of what this is revolving around now, um, and this is the 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 Breivik, uh mass shooting of of twenty eleven, which is is a is a funny topic I think to tackle at this point in time, um. Not specifically at this point, just in the sense that it's only been, you know, seven years. It, it is funny, because Paul Greengrass directed this, who I do like as a director, but he also did 1993, which I also thought at the time was a bit too soon to be doing movies about 9-11. And this one's especially kind of murky, I think, because the perpetrator's whole thing, the reason why he did this, the reason why he killed 60-plus people in 2011 on this island is because he wanted to use it as a as a... Almost as an advert for his for his ideological beliefs. Like, oh, this is my you know he's like uh, feminism is ruining uh, European like civilization and blah blah blah, and all these extreme notions. Right, he wanted to promote all that. I can't help but feel that all all that making a movie about this is doing is making him happy. No, I mean sure. I I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I don't know. However. I think the point of the movie is like, hey, look how wrong this guy is. No, 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 I don't dispute that. I, I, I don't think for a second the movie's going to, <laughs> going to side with him in any way. He's clearly the villain in the movie, and it looks like it's going to be well shot and be tense and whatever. The scenes of the the the, the, the young, I say youngsters, you know, they're like you know college age, like or t- yeah. maybe high, late high school age. The, they're yeah. with them hiding in the island because you know he comes over the island he's dressed as a cop like that looks tense that looks really tense right it looks effective as a piece of filmmaking and I'm not saying we can't make something like a movie about this at some point it just feels weird to do it this soon to me I get that I get that especially in the climate that we're in now with still a lot of mass shootings yeah I, I feel like not, not in Norway specifically but you know I feel like while he's still alive in prison it's probably still too soon. I mean, maybe, maybe you can disagree with that. I mean, I'm not saying I'm the authority on this. I just that's yeah, how I feel. I, I think I think I disagree. With that. I, I don't know if it is too soon for me. I think it it all depends on the tone. If it's if it's a really clear, you know, condemnation of of his ideals, it's promoting the opposite, right? Again, again, Which I assume that's what this yeah, is doing. Yeah, again, I I don't dispute that. That's that's probably what the point of the movie is. That's fine, but. I don't know. Like it just it feels a bit weird to do it. I, I think you you know you, you said oh you you think oh he'll he he'll he might be happy that it's you know it's it, his. It's reminding you know, everyone. It's saying here right, this yeah. is you know, this is why I did it. You know everyone right, pay attention. Right. Yeah, I understand that logic that you're saying, but I think to me the idea of, you know people will see that and on, almost laugh at him for being so stupid and wrong. That, you, you think that's going to be the reaction more? to it? Well, not not literally, but you know the 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 idea and concept that people will go, yeah, how can he possibly have those views? That's that's moronic, uh, right? Well, don't glance at the YouTube comments then, because you're you're about to feel miserable. I know, I know, I'm not going to. I'll be honest, it's um, one of the it's one of the most depressing. Like, I don't usually glance at YouTube comments, but for some reason I did on this trailer, and they were depressing to read. And you stop to think to yourself, are some of these people just trying to troll with those sentences? So I had to look because you said yeah. the first two comments, I was like, oh, this isn't that bad. One of them was kind of agreeing with what you were saying. Mm-hmm. One of them was saying yeah, they, were, they were glad that they were focusing around a survivor rather than the killer, so it wasn't glorifying him. And then the third comment, it went downhill. Yes, it went very downhill very quickly. There's a few I, I like that. I don't even want to read that yeah. out loud. No, no I, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Um, and it's just... I don't know. I, I feel like it's just, and like you say, the climate right now with all the mass shootings. I, I, I think a mass shooting is a topic to put in a movie is a really because obviously I, I like horror movies. I like movies with a lot of people getting killed. But there's something about doing it the exact, you know, and this is actually based on a real event specifically as well. But just doing it, I think you have to do it with tact. And I'm not saying the movie won't have tact because I, I saw United ninety three. I don't think there was anything in it that was like oh they shouldn't have done this it was just kind of weird that it existed and no, nothing distasteful in yeah it, in it itself but just oddly kind of clinical and i mean it, feel, it feels cruel to say pointless i don't know if it's pointless per se i mean obviously it's trying to celebrate the people who died on that plane right you know i can yeah. see the reasoning behind it but it just kind of felt weird to to do this and make money off of it so soon 
Now, obviously, eventually you have to make media and film and whatever about any subject because ultimately you, you you learn from history by not forgetting it. You want to remember it and make sure people know why things happened. It's you know it's why Germany is so strict with talking about Nazi culture. Like they they make sure everyone's educated. They talk about why things went that way, um, and they do really you know put a lot of effort into that. And you know it's, it's a classic thing. You know those who don't learn learn the lessons of history are doomed to repeat it. And film can be part of the 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 process of that it can make sure you know yeah. it makes it more uh, digestible for the audience to, to have like a movie of it rather mm-hmm. than you know go and research it yourself or whatever but um this feels a bit too soon for me i guess the movie itself looks like it's well made but no i i, I, I understand your your reservations i just don't share them that's fair that's fair um but yeah so i'm not saying i wouldn't watch it but at the same time i don't feel this inclined to do so like i'm not, I'm not cause... this is this again if i hear good things i'll probably cave and check it out like i, I, don't, I don't i'm not saying like oh everyone should boycott it or anything like that or that i'm even going to boycott it personally like, that's not what i feel i'm just like nah i probably just won't choose to put it on i don't feel like it yeah but you're not actively going no yeah. not watch that but if, if someone goes oh let's watch this for whatever reason they're, they're going oh we're, we're gonna watch this tonight yeah we're dead set on it for whatever reason i'll be like okay whatever um, yeah. but yeah I don't know it just it made, me, it just made me think I was like eh no, yeah. no, I get it uh, so that's 22nd of July um, next up we had Thunder Road which is another one we're, we're getting a lot of movies right now that have clearly made some rounds at festivals because there's a lot of those festival logos popping up in trailers uh, and this was one of them yeah. I have a question about this one, just about its distribution before we get to um, anything else. You're going to ask if it's out yet. It's not. It's, it's up for pre-order right now on iTunes. Well, no, that's not what I was going to ask. Okay. You, but obviously, you know, if it's a Netflix movie, you get it just on Netflix, and they they tell you that in the trailer. This one at the end, I don't know if it's just the 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 link that you have provided with, but at the end of the trailer, it's oh available on iTunes. Is this is this exclusive to iTunes? I don't know. If I was to guess, I think this is like video games where certain movies or certain games in that case will make a deal to be the front of the advertising so i think itunes yeah. maybe has like the deal to oh you you know we'll promote your movie more if you promote us our service is the, the main place to go watch it but it may still be available in other vod services that's fair i just i i actually wasn't sure when that popped because i've never seen an itunes one on any yeah, of not, the trailers that we've have I. um or maybe it is exclusive but i don't know but, i mean it doesn't say anything about it in the description. It gives me the link, but it doesn't yeah. tell me that it's exclusive or anything. Yeah, I feel like it's just that kind of thing where you'll see an ad, an ad for a movie, a game, or whatever, and it'll say at the end, available at this store now, just because that store's maybe partnered with them for yeah, the advertising. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, used, I'm used to seeing it in other places and yeah. other, you know, in other products, just not, not for film, usually. So this is about a, a, a man who... We see that he's, he's very loving with his daughter and he's kissing her goodnight. And you know, says, "Oh, do you want the light in the hall?" He's like, "No, I'm fine." And we see a couple of sweet moments where they're sort of clapping together and stuff. And then it cuts ahead to after his wife has left him and presumably taken his daughter away from him, and he's having a mental breakdown. It's about a man who's clearly crumbling under the pressure of how his life has changed and he's lost his daughter. And we see he's a police officer, and we see that the his, his fellow officers around him as he's as he's topless screaming in the the, the the you know the car park outside about everything that's going on in his life. And he's a little bit self-aware. He acknowledges he's drunk. Um, much like some of the other trailers we've talked about, I think this did a good job of having a tone. There's a very specific kind of just off-kilter tone to it. It did, but I have to say this one didn't work for me at all. That's all the, 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 you know, the, the, the quotes that come up talk about it being, oh, this fantastic comedic performance. <clears throat> and I'm like, okay, this this is supposed to be darkly funny, but I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I didn't get that. Um, I never, I don't think I read that particular quote, so I never really even had it in my head. There, there was... was three or four of them that said yeah. that, like, uh, and I don't know. I was, I wasn't seeing that. That's fair. Um, I think it worked a bit better for me than it did for you. I, I think I got the sense that this is pro, that this is probably a good performance. That the guy's really going for it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a bad performance. I just, uh, I'm not, I'm not getting what they're telling me for, uh, with it. I'll be honest. I don't read most of these quotes that pop up. I tend to skim them when I can. Sometimes, sometimes I miss them. I, I think I'm so used to them popping up in trailers that I just kind of zone, just zone them out. Like I don't I think get about that, it. But they usually, in, in my experience anyway, they're usually picked for a you know a reason. They pick this one to say it's it's 
part of the way they convey what the tone is, right? Especially, like, maybe if there's only one or two, but in this one especially, there was, like, a, a lot of them. It kept popping up with more. So after a couple, there I was, was just kind of like... I just thought I stopped reading them. I was like, okay, I get the point. People are praising it. It's fine. <laughs> no, I get that. Like, this one here said it was jaw-dropping funny. Hmm. Uh, yeah, like that. Let's just... I'm like... I'm not getting that. Like the music on top of it as well wasn't. Well, ignore me that, that though, because was... I wasn't. I wasn't looking for funny at all, though. Ignore, ignore the quotes. Just the trailer itself. Oh, okay. The the trailer itself is 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 fine. Because I I, um, I I have absolutely nothing to argue with here with this comedy stuff because I never noticed that and wasn't even thinking about it in that way. <laughs> I was just seeing uh, an off kilter drama with the the, the piano kind of like accent in various moments. And it was being very kind of downbeat, and it, it goes that's back fair. again. I, I, it goes back again at the end to the daughter and him clapping, and just kind of the somber moment at the end. So I did not get funny at all from this. Um, no, oh, no, and that, that was my problem because they're putting these. Qu- I've got one here. It says that one of the best comic performances of the decade. But I, I can see and how it could be funny though. I can, I can see why mm-hmm. him losing it could become darkly funny. No, no, I agree. And but this is my problem as a trailer. I, 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 I do consider the quotes an integral part of the, of the trailer because they're they're choosing to put them front and center to tell me more about the film because you know that's that's accenting the footage uh, along with the description and they're telling me this is funny this is supposed oh, I'm to be not disputing that funny. I just like I never even thought about it in that way because I never paid attention to them <laughs> yeah oh, fair enough um I, I think the only one I, I read was something about the just how good his performance was. It didn't say anything about it being funny. Yeah. Um. And I, I just no. I mean, I, I thought it worked relatively well. Um. I think it's a well cut trailer. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's a well cut trailer. Um. So uh, it's nicely bookended with the 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 clapping with the door. Yeah, and like I said, the, the tone kind of worked for me, and how just, just the awkwardness of the people around them kind of watching them deteriorate. Um. Mm. So. I don't know, again, it is, this kind of falls into again for me, just like, oh, I expect this probably to get some good buzz, and therefore I will probably see it by the time, you know, catch-up season for Oscars comes around. Not that Nestle will be in that race, but it definitely looks like one that I'd be interested in, potentially. Um, yeah, fair enough. So that's Thunder Road. Next up, we got At First Light. We're going to shift gears completely here, away from the the, the serious dramas and dramedies, and into... Uh, a teen sci-fi. Teen sci-fi story. Uh, about a girl who has telekinesis who either is alien or got it from an alien meteorite or something like that because the government because most of this yeah. movie seems to revolve mostly around the the secret agents chasing them down because they want to experiment on her and there was other experimental subjects who got away or, or died in the, the process they all died yeah, yeah. Um, so and it's they her falling in love with this boy who's like I don't want anything to happen to you and she's like I'll protect you and there's other moments. <laughs> do, do you know what I think is the most notable thing about this trailer? Mm-hmm. That it's the first of three, I think, that was from the same production company, uh, Gravitas Ventures. I know because I noticed the oh. name on this one, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, I didn't really think much of it because I'd never seen it before. And then it was on the next one, I, I, I kind of noticed again, and then I'm sure it was on the one after that as well. That is just a coincidence. I wasn't ordering them in any way. Um, All right. So. Okay. <laughs> I, I did not notice that there was the same production company all three of them I have to admit yeah uh, yeah it looks kind of cheap and generic I guess would be my uh, it looks really dark like like it's just not bright enough that I can't really see what's going on right now yeah it? not dark in tone dark in they just didn't shoot it properly although not not as dark as Alien vs Predator Requiem just for the record no there like there, there are I'm, I'm looking here now like there are shots uh underwater that I can barely make out the person there like it just uh, it's horrible and murky yeah and, yeah and it does look very cheap honestly the thing that stood out to me the most is that it felt very recycled like I feel like I've seen Midnight Special I've seen um, as you know as much as I think it'll be a, a classic uh, to talk about I've seen Flight of the Navigator obviously there's shades of E.T. in there the and idea of frankly some stranger things yeah the, the idea of the government agents chasing down the, the test subject like I've seen this all done before which would maybe okay I can still enjoy another story about that but nothing in this gave me a spark like I don't think anything was outright terrible per se no no, no there was nothing that was nothing like yeah super generic yeah um yeah so yeah uh, this, uh, this honestly is the first one 
where I don't really have anything positive to say at all. Um, that's this no, was more. I, I, I don't have any. Yeah. So next up, we get a trailer for 1985. This is a black and white film that is shot in 1.66 to one. Uh, first thing that I noticed, of oh, course. Of course, that's the first thing that you said. Uh, but hey, it's the first thing because you, you notice the shape, you notice the black and white, and it's got a very natural, quiet shooting style. And by that, I mean there's a lot of just static camera, let the actors act, and what well, feels like a very downbeat drama. But the the black and white and the the, the silence kind of gives it a bit more of a, a a tone compared to what it could have maybe if it was just playing them like any other movie would. Um, yeah, that's fair. And it seems to be a story about a kid, college age kid who went away, left home. He didn't come back last Christmas, but he's coming back this Christmas. Michael Chiklis plays the father. Um, nice to see him. I'm a big fan of The Shield, uh, which he was the, the, the lead on. So that was cool. Um, and the the kid comes back and is set in 85 and he, he, is, he is gay. His parents don't know he's gay. And it's kind of about him sort of coming back home and kind of living with them through Christmas, with them not knowing that, and trying to set him up with a girl. Uh, in fact, I, I recognise the girl. I think it was uh, Jamie Chung. From, Jamie Chung. Yeah. yeah. So, the... Joe, you know, it's funny. At first, I wasn't feeling this, but the more it went on, and the more it was kind of letting the scenes just sort of sit there, and letting the acting play, it feels like a movie where you're going to have to be in the mood for this, because it's very much a... It's a very stark film, by the looks of it. It's very raw. Yeah. Um, But the performances do look good. I do. I, I wanted to get the trailer. Didn't I? Just didn't quite get into it. I wanted to, because mm. I I like what it's doing in theory. You know, uh, the the style, the look. It just it just didn't grab me. It was getting me more went on after it met. I, I was kind of been pulled in. Uh, the the more it was it was, it was continuing. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have much to add. I, uh, prefer- it's, it's it's definitely a, one of the more unique trailers uh, from this week, though. Yeah, it stuck out for being unique. It was another one where there was a bunch of blurbs coming up saying, blah, 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 performance from the lead is exceptional and heartbreaking and honest and Yeah, like, uh, there was a few that said yeah, it was a great ensemble cast. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's cool. Um but yeah, I know, I mean, again, I'm, I'm interested. I, you know, this is actually one of the, the best weeks in a while for just, like, having movie after movie almost that I'm like yeah yeah that was kind of good I, I can see pretty, that being pretty great. consistent yeah yeah, pre- pretty consistent at a good level because we've had consistent weeks before where it's just shit shit yeah shit. There's, there's not been anything that's blown me away it's like oh I need to see that yeah but not, there's been like a lot of going yeah I could watch this absolutely. I, feel, I feel like I can enjoy this be a pretty good movie yeah I think and I think what they all have in common as well the ones we're talking about is they all have pretty solid trailers that clearly display what the film is. Yeah. Definitely. I'd, I'd lump that in there with the other ones that I was complimenting earlier. I feel like I get the tone, I get the vibe of this one, um, and I can, and like I say, it's very raw. That is the best word I can use to describe this. It feels raw. Yeah. Because they've just sat yeah, a definitely. camera in a corner and let the actors do it. And you know what? It's working. At least from what I can see it is, in this. absolutely. Yeah, it, it does seem to be. So... So that's cool. Uh, moving on, we have um, an actor prepares. This is this is um, Jeremy Irons, who's who's plays a, plays an actor who's just turned seventy, and he has some health issues. His daughter's getting married, and we see he's a bit of a, a curmudgeon. You know, he, he openly talks about his, his favorite daughter, his favorite child, and his assistant's like you know played by uh, what's his shorts, what's his face? Yes. Uh, you know, John Alfield from Parks and Rec. You know his face. Um, and he says, "Oh, don't be ridiculous," because he, he says, "Like, oh, you shouldn't have a, a favorite child." And were you starting to in the, the bathroom? He's like, "Don't be ridiculous. Everyone has a favorite." Um, so you get kind of his character right away. It boils down to being a road trip movie because he's not allowed to fly because of his condition, and his other his son, who he doesn't like very much, and his son doesn't like him, has to drive him to to the daughter's wedding uh, through the country. So it's a big long road trip of a movie, and they seem to hate each other, but they'll probably bond. Um, as a as a funny moment at the end of the trailer, I, I thought it it cut too quick. It didn't let it breathe. But there's a funny moment right at the end. The, the tail joke is Jeremy Irons for some reason. We don't even know why, but for some reason he hits an ice cream cone out of a kid's hand, and that did make me laugh. Yeah, the question is, do you think the cut was just for the trailer? Do you think? Do you think? Or do you think it was just cut away too quickly in general? It's hard to say. It definitely cuts away too quickly in the trailer. It just cuts it does immediately. in the trailer, but I, it, I don't know if it, that's just in the trailer. If there's more to it in the final yeah, version, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. 
Um, I really like uh, Jeremy Lin's performance in this. Yeah, he looks pretty good. I, honestly, this is the first one where I'm kind of murky overall, though. I think the rest of the trailer feels a little bit generic. It does. I think he's probably going to carry it into a being an enjoyable enough movie. Yeah. But it does have that generic feeling with the, okay, here's the father and son trying to bond, right? Yeah. Um, and it looks like it may have some fun moments, but I wasn't getting... Just, just you know... Uh, the spark. The spark felt missing. It felt like it was going through the motions. And Jeremy Irons is good enough that he was making a couple of lines or moments stand out, but it wasn't yeah. you know, completely, completely shocking me here. Next up, we got a film called White Rabbit, which is... Uh, a performance artist, uh, sort of experimental art, this character, who is also working, uh, what was the exact job? They, were, they called it something at some point. It was basically a cleaner. She came in to help clean things in an emergency. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't remember the exact But they had a name for it. That's it, basically what it was. It, st- it stuck out to me. Um, but she's doing her art and it's it's kind of a quirky trailer kind of showing that her art's not underappreciated and it keeps it keeps being mistaken and she does various things like she'll put on like a wig and she'll do like a, a character in the middle of the street or she'll she'll do something in a supermarket and she's like at additions and stuff and they kind of ask her to do it because she's korean and they ask her to do like a, you know the, the the racist asian voice like you do an asian voice you do it in your own because he, he calls it your authentic dialect and she's like well you yeah. mean the, the asian voice you know that the, yeah um and we see she actually does stoop to that in a couple of scenes, uh, but and she's kind of befriends someone, and it's kind of it seems like this like an uplifting kind of no stick to your art because it's important somewhere someone will understand it someday. It kind of has that vibe going yeah, for it. I get what this is supposed to be, but I found it painfully unfunny. That's fair. I didn't laugh. I, it didn't bother me that much, but it didn't make me laugh that much either. There were points where I'm like, ugh, this is supposed to be funny, and I'm just kind of almost cring- not quite cringing at it, but almost. I thought the ending tag was funny. Remind remind me of the ending tag. She sits down after like an act, and she's got a cup of coffee, and someone throws money in her coffee, and she's like, that's my coffee, you asshole, or something to that effect. Alright, yeah, okay. That's alright. That's alright, joke. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nah, if, if, you, if you like the deliveries there, you think the script's slightly off, that's fair enough. I... I didn't like it that much either. It's it's kind of in a more murky. It's the sort of thing though where if if again if this comes out and gets buzz, I wouldn't it wouldn't be surprised me if the trailer's just not good enough to sh- to show it because comedy's timing, right? And I feel like you cut cut it up for the trailer. Yeah, it's it's very easy to ruin a comedy trailer. So maybe that's what's what's making it not work. Um, it does it does again. It feels like a, a star vehicle. Not that she's a star yet, the actress in this, but it's the 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 blobs coming up seem to think she's going to be a star. <laughs> so. Yeah. So that's what that's what that's how they're selling it. Um, but she she definitely has a lot of energy. So she was definitely carrying the scenes for better or worse. Definitely. Yeah. And the scenes she was in. So uh, that that is White Rabbit. So next up we have Anna and the Apocalypse, which is a film that I've been hearing about for like over a year now. I think it was shot. I remember in... us talking about it on the news recently. Yeah, but I think it was shot and like done sometime last year. It's been it's been a while from you know end of production till, till release uh, I, I guess maybe they just didn't quite make the deadline for last Christmas so they had to wait <laughs> for, for for this Christmas it's kind of what you have to do with Christmas movies right I suppose it is um, so this I know it was British so I actually never knew that but it's a it's a zombie apocalypse film at Christmas and it's also a musical yeah yeah uh, which I was I was like is this the thing that finally makes me enjoy a Christmas movie Alter- yes, I think it might be. Alternatively, I was thinking, is Zombie Christmas enough apocalypse to outweigh enough enough to make me enjoy a musical? That's that's what I was thinking. Uh, there was a quote that came up pretty early on in this review that said, "Shaun of the Dead meets La La Land," <laughs> and I was like, "I'm in." <laughs> I'm I feel just, I'm just so in. I wonder, like, how, how, like that quote. I wonder if the person actually says, "No, no, there's reasons why they came here to specifically to La La Land," or if they just thought of the first musical that came out of their mind that was recent. It, it might be that, to be honest. It might be that. Yeah, I feel like it I, probably I is. Yeah, it's it's good enough for me. <clears throat> um, everything except the singing, I like the look of. <laughs> it looks so much fun. So, I mean, I'll probably do it for screams. I mean, how often? I I appreciate how 
little it seemed overtly Christmassy for a lot of it there, there are bits but it didn't seem like you know your usual Christmas movie it'll be more Christmassy I'm sure in the, the full thing it, it probably will I think that, to be honest the most Christmassy things I can see are like Santa zombies which is cool I'm okay with that I'm, I'm definitely okay with that um but yeah, uh, so so that Anna and the Apocalypse that's coming out obviously later this year for Christmas time. <laughs> Look, I, I I might even jump on that screams with you. A lot of comical violence. That that's what I'd say. From what I like from the trailer there was a lot of like just over the top, you know, whacking of zombies' faces and cutting things and and all sorts. What's so, not to love about that? Uh, so our final trailer for the week though. Is one from last week for sure. This is the only one that I know for sure was last week because I saw it last week. And said I need to remember that. That's good on the trailer talk show. This is oh yes. This is Airstrike, which stars Bruce Willis and Adrian Brody. Proper actors, usually. Usually, yeah. <laughs> so, sometimes, in the case of Bruce Willis, uh, this is a film set in World War Two. And it's Bruce Willis, so is this obviously an American, teaching uh, a group of Chinese pilots. He's training them. He's like the, 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 com- the commander. And uh, he's training them how to, to be pilots. And this trailer looks absolutely atrocious in the best okay. possible ways. Let, let's let start with <clears throat> something that I haven't seen in a, tra- in a serious trailer in maybe a decade. The, the voiceover? voiceover? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> every every time it comes up with the you know the narration that you get between scenes you know the, the, the text, normal for trailers yeah, captions yeah. yeah but it has a voiceover oh boy in the second world war Bruce Willis <laughs> and and some of them are, are way too short to actually narrate yes yes they're very quick and too snappy. Bruce Willis is like phoning it in. He, you can basically tell he's phoning this in from his home in LA. Like that's that's how far he's phoning this in. I believe this is a Chinese funded film, which would make some sense. So they can clearly afford to yeah, get well, some actors in. I but... feel like they could have funded it a bit more because the planes and CG look utterly atrocious. Yeah, Bruce Willis is just like half asleep. Even when he's in the cockpit of a plane with a cigar, he's just kind of like hamming it up. There's like no credence to it whatsoever. There's just nothing to like compliment it. It is laughably bad yeah can, can we talk about the moment where someone jumps out of a plane to attack another plane we can we can try to <laughs> I mean I'm not sure I have the words Nor do I wanted I. just to acknowledge that it happens I also don't have the words for when one of the Chinese pilots like steps forward to, to finish Bruce Willis' sentences yes sir we're going to kick some ass I'm like what's happening everything yeah. about this is just let bizarrely like forced everything feels forced let's not overlook the plane landing on the jeep (laughs) no no (laughs) also adrian brody's a doctor and he has a a romance with a nurse or a chinese yeah or a chinese doctor maybe it's a chinese doctor or someone who's helping him at the the local clinic that he's helping out at who cares what any of the characters are it doesn't matter it's utterly asinine (laughs) Every, every line of dialogue is bad every visual effect shot is bad it feels like it feels like an asylum movie almost you know where it's just that dirt cheap they just happen to have Bruce Willis and it's that, that thing in fact at one point Bruce Willis is wearing his, you know, his, his, his coat you know his air force coat his you know, proper jacket with the, the badges and stuff yeah. right and it looks too big it looks like they, they got a coat and it wasn't it wasn't the right size So, they, but they just had him wear it anyway because his sleeves are like going to because he's saluting in the scene he's, he's, got, he's got his hand up saluting and he's, he's, his sleeve is just like covering his hand yeah yeah it's, it's shoddy it's shoddy shoddy to downright it embarrassing is. across the board I just I just glanced at some of the, the YouTube comments and one of them is, is absolutely on point <clears throat> oh go on uh, saying that Bruce, Bruce Willis is the new Nicolas Cage Not yet. He's getting there, though. He's not done enough. Give it another two years. Not done enough, but it, it, it could happen. Yeah, and just like Nicholas Cage, you'll have the occasional actual good movie, just kind of spread spread throughout. Yeah, 
Hopefully that's glass. Hopefully that's glass. But you know, Nicolas Cage had Bad Lieutenant and Kick-Ass in 2010, which was right in the middle of his shit period. Like, you know, he had tons of shit before that, he had tons of shit after that, but he had those two movies right in the middle. Yeah, yeah, no, no one gives him shit for those. So yeah, I, it looks terrible. But, so, but you definitely want to watch it, don't you? Are you going to promise this like you promised the Siren review, which is still, like, just hanging over our necks? I didn't say we'd watch it. I said you'd watch it. <laughs> I am not. Piss I mean, off. May, 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 maybe if we get one evening after Arrow and I'm still drunk. <laughs> yeah, I ain't promising Give, give it the blood range. Treatment. See, this is the problem. Now that I'm doing those written reviews, which are I can do solo, he thinks he can threaten me with these, all these movies that only I have to watch. I ain't doing a written review of this. No, no chance. Think of the clicks. No one's clicking on reviews for Airstrike. Shut up. Oh, they are. People need to know how badly you're going to tear it to shreds. They need to know. No, they don't. No. No, no. Tell him, commenters. Tell him how badly you need to know. It's not happening. Just how awful it truly is in its final form. I am not watching Airstrike and writing a review and then narrating the review and then editing the review for 10 people to watch it because 10 people care. But you could do it all in the voice that he does in the trailer. (laughs) <laughs> Airstrike is a terrible movie. The characters are not fleshed out. I, I, I'm just doing Batman now. It, it just you can't you can't sustain that voice. That 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 voice is is designed for short sentences. It is in a world which is the challenge for your review. You can't write a, you can't <laughs> do anything longer than like five words a sentence. Or you have to break the sentences up because you because the trailer you do in a world. Yeah, and then you pause, and then you, you know. Yeah, it's 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 a writing exercise for you. <laughs> no, it's not happening. And uh, that right, Firefly. Telling people. And that right. Make him. Yes, yes. Like I said, if if I'm drunk enough after Arrow, we have got time. We'll give it the blood rain treatment. Yes, I like the idea that he came up to defend me when you were giving me shit. It's like he's your ginger spirit animal. So he's 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 he's, he's acting in your interest. Sure. Yeah. that was the last trailer though so mercifully we can wrap this up and pick our favourite of the week and it's kind of a, a lot to pick from actually I think this time there's a lot of solid trailers yeah yeah. definitely a lot of solid solid put together trailers and I think beyond that most of them look like they're potentially solid movies so a lot to pick from that said Halloween wins for me <laughs> because I have an attachment to that movie and that trailer was great it gave me what I wanted from it Halloween wins but if I'm picking a runner up just for the sake of you know picking a winner out of the rest some of some discussion yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> it would either be Wildlife or maybe 1985 for the for the, the the stricter tones, maybe at Eternity's Gate. Like I say, there's a lot of really comparable trailers this week in terms of quality, but um... there is. I think in terms of the film, I'm most excited for out mm. of all the ones that I watched. It's it's definitely Anna and the Apocalypse. <laughs> like, legitimately, that's the one that I'm like, yes, I need to see this. Sure. None of the others made me do that, but it's 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 definitely not the best trailer. It's a good trailer, but it's not the best trailer. I mean, you don't even think it's going to be the best movie, though. I feel like at least a couple of those other trailers are going to be legitimately better films than Anna and the Apocalypse. Oh, oh no doubt. Certainly. Yeah. Almost, almost certainly. But that's the one I want to see most. <laughs> so, you know. If, if I'm only giving the money to one, like, you know, it's, it's that one. But What's the best trailer? I think I'm going to go with the, the front runner. I thought it was a really solid trailer and, the, and you know, it had a really great pace and tone. No, that's fair. I can't dispute it. So there you go. That That is this week's trailer talk. Um, I Obviously, I, I kind of brought it up already, but it's worth plugging a new thing we're doing, uh, which is scripted reviews, short scripted reviews. There are still videos. Um, I still... I, I, is narrate the right word when it's just a, a review? Yeah. Is it still the right word? Okay. Yeah, I narrate them uh, with some images on the screen to for some visual... Uh, visual aid if you will uh, but you know we started doing those basically done, so we can make a Buffy joke every time done a couple of those there's been a Buffy joke in every one god damn right there has been and it's um, we've done two so far I'm working on the third one and right now it's me that's writing them all but over time some may actually be written by other members of Mailed Fuzz 
I, I guarantee once I actually get some time off from work mm-hmm. and have time to do anything other than <clears> just, just the, the bare minimum that we do here as it is, Yes, I, I will be writing some. Yes, um, and it may also lead to some uh, opinion pieces as opposed to just reviews. Um, I, I was thinking of doing one for, for uh, October, but it depends on time because they, they do act, they're actually t- quite time-consuming compared to the rest of the content and take at least a couple of days to do from, from watching the movie to actually the final product. It's quite a bit of work over a couple of days to, to actually achieve it or a hell of a lot of work in one day. But given that we usually have other things to do, it tends to be two days. Yeah, <laughs> so. maybe, maybe you'll get a couple out in the, in, in the week that, that everyone's away in October. Uh, very possibly, very possibly. Um, but yeah, so a couple went up. But Summer of '84 went up, and Upgrade went up. I, I did those films. I'm working on a review for the Nun. I'm, I'm, sometimes I'll keep it a secret. I'm not keeping that a secret because it's kind of obvious because it's new, it's out, and yeah, yeah. And, and you're getting the screams on it anyway. Yeah, so you get because this is the thing: the scripted reviews do not um, replace the discussions. There'll be there'll be movies that get both. Uh, the Nun will be the first one that'll get both the screams after midnight with me and Tim talking about it in a traditional way but you'll also get the short five or so minute scripted review that's a bit tighter and um, you know hopefully witty at places I wouldn't hold your breath I'll put that on my edge I've got a running joke in the Nun review that is kind of stupid is it Buffy related? It's not Buffy. There's a Buffy joke at one point. To be honest, the Buffy joke in that one wasn't even that exciting to do because they hand it to me on a silver platter. To the actually. There's, there's a hell mouth in it. There's a goddamn hell mouth. So, I mean... What? They don't call it a hell mouth, right? They don't call it... That's what it is. That's fine. <laughs> if they called it a hell mouth, that one, I'd really be going to town. <laughs> Go to town on that one. Uh, but, yeah, so so that's coming up, uh, as, as is the streams with, with Tim. Uh, so you can look forward to that. Um, no doubt Halloween will get a scripted review. That'll probably be the longest scripted review I'll ever do, <laughs> is that Halloween you review. You will not be able to contain yourself the extra few days to talk to Tim about <laughs> that, that That'll be an extended uh, visual essay of a, of a review. Um, they've been spoiler free so far I'm not necessarily against doing a spoiler section but right now it doesn't seem like it's worth doing it feels like the point of them is to have a, a short spoiler free review but at the same time it's like if there's a lot to discuss thematically that I want to really analyse it may be worth doing spoiler sections for some of them if I feel the need to do so but so far that's not happened there's, I can save it for the discussion come back for the discussion you can get spoilers but uh, so that's the nun, uh, then obviously they'll check out the other movie reviews and stuff, and the movie news and everything else, and blah 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 TV news, all the other stuff uh, obviously the big thing to promote is uh, Patreon patreon.com slash TV. Uh, that is the, the key way in which we are supported we're supported of course also through ads on YouTube so if you can't support us on Patreon, do, you know, turn your ad block off, let the ads play that, that, that's us, guys on Twitter, that mail underscore fuzz for channel updates, let us know what you thought of the trailers in the comments all that stuff, uh, so thank you very much once again for watching and listening, we always appreciate it, keep watching movies guys and we'll see you next time.